Hello everyone, it is me, Jerry Gaming here, and welcome to a Splatoon 2 tier list. Yes, I'm doing one of my own. I've, I've not really necessarily have been super motivated to do one of my own, but I've always kind of like had the idea behind my back. I've always wa really wanted to see how my opinions kind of just, you know, lay out, you know, in front. And I've always wanted to put it together in a little video. So, of course, this is going to be opinion based, and you know, with my two years of experience of practically two and a half years of experience playing Splatoon 2 I am um, hopefully that the that the information that I'm going to be using and my knowledge I'm going to be you know using and from other opinions from other professional players who play Splatoon 2 as well hopefully this will be a good enough video for you guys and also hopefully I'll edit it in a way where it'll be a lot more entertaining than literally every other Splatoon 2 tier list video that has ever existed because all of them are pretty boring and I'm pretty sure there's a way I can make it at least somewhat viewable and somewhat like you know oh yeah th this is pretty cool and stuff you know so without further ado this is my opinion m most like half of most of it is my opinion this is my opinion of the Splatoon 2 weapons tier list so without further ado let's get into it All right, so first starting with the F tier, or for the uh, the fail tier list, <laughs> at least that's what I want to go by, or at least that's what it probably is. There's the undercover umbrella. Um, I feel like, well, I feel like it can be a decent weapon, but because no one really uses it, there's not really much to go off of, and plus, it ink mine splashdown with a weapon that kind of can't stand by itself doesn't really mishmash together at all very well, so that kind of puts it down really massively so um yeah that's why I put the undercover brilla I'm not sure if it's necessarily the worst weapon but it's one of the six worst weapons in the game um flings a roller it's like um the foil flings are it's not it's not that better of an example but uh, it has the foil flings are flings a or however you say it has a suction bomb antenna missiles and why is that better than a flingza roller with splash wall and uh, splat bomb launcher? Because tenon missiles is more meta nowadays, and splash wall on a weapon that needs to be mobile is not good at all. Flingza roller might be the worst weapon in the game, might, because the weapon can sometimes, the main weapon itself can also sometimes be inconsistent as well compared to all the other rollers in the game. So it's possible that it might be the worst weapon in the game. But I think the the competition behind that would have to be in between the Flingza roller, the regular Flingza, and the two of the goo tubers, which I'll go I'll get into the details of that later. Uh, Clash Blaster, it's like okay, so blasters are obviously known for not being able to paint at all, and what's different about the Clash Blaster and the Neo Clash Blaster is that it has the Neo has curling bomb, which means it can get around places. Kind of like how the Splushomatic and the, uh, the Splat Roller do, but they do that way more efficiently. The Clash Blaster's kill time is, uh, if you're just doing only splash hits, um, it's it's not going to kill at all. Or, let's just say this. First of all, it almost has no range, so it gets outranged by a lot of weapons in the game. A second, the kill time is really, really, really slow. Slower to like something like the Splattershot Pro, or maybe even, maybe even the GooTuber, in fact, and uh, the Glucadoolies, the 52 gal, it's just, it's, it's mostly inconsistent in terms of its qualities, the qualities don't allow it to have consistency, that's kind of what the Clash Blaster is, the Clash Blaster's problem, apparently, everyone's thinking, oh, like, oh yeah, because, you know, the Clash Blaster's got a really big impact, so that means it's really good, and because, you know, it's got a really good fire rate, but, well, no, it can't, if it can't paint, if it doesn't have a good kit behind it, if it doesn't allow it to do what it wants to do, which is to move around and kill people, and, you know, it, since because it can't paint, and since because it's really weak, it's not good. It's just not good. Squiffer? Just the regular Squiffer. I don't remember what they actually call it. I think it was, like, just Squiffer. Classic Squiffer, I think. And both GooTubers I have as the worst chargers in the game. Um, the Squiffer, I'll get into that later. Uh, the GooTubers... Okay, you can't have a charger that, like, doesn't do anything. It doesn't paint. Well, maybe it can paint. Maybe. But, like, there are other weapons that can paint much better 
than um, the Gucci bro. I'm also going off this tier list by like, you know, how well it can paint and how well it can like, you know, perform things consistently and how well can it do compared to other weapons. I think that's probably the biggest one is how well it can do compared to other weapons. So that's why the Gucci is really low. You can argue that it can paint, but you could also argue that, you know, the 52 can paint, the Rapid Blasters can paint, especially the pros, and other weapons that shouldn't be able to paint, but, you know, kind of do better than the Gootuber at least. The Gootuber's charge time is just really slow for something with not that much of a range. I think the problem is, is that it's a slow charge time with no range. Not as slow as the E-Leader, but the E-Leader has range, and the regular E-Leader has a kit that could actually, you know, work for it, but it's still slow. The Gootuber is... Om is just a bit faster than the E leader, but it has no, it has, it doesn't have the range of the E leader, and I think that's probably the biggest problem. It, and yeah, you can kill early with the Gootuber at like 71%, maybe e I think it was that like 71% charge, and then maybe even higher depending on if you're putting on main power up. Um, but this still doesn't change the fact that it has no reach compared to the other chargers. Squiffer, I feel like is the same reason. I mean, it's faster. It might paint better. But, you have to treat it like a frontliner, and chargers are not frontliners. And I think that's the main issue with the Squiffer. It's supposed to be a frontliner when it's not a frontliner. At all. Um, giving it ink armor, which it can't really paint that well. Well, okay, maybe it can, but not compared to something like the Splatter Shot Jr., but... Or the NZAP, or the 96, or the H3D. But, it can paint A-okay, but... You have other better options for using ink armor, and you also have better option. You also have better options for weapons with point sensor. The only thing it's really good at is getting kills. That's the problem. Like, okay, there are some wep there are some low tier weapons are that are really good at getting kills, but if that's the only thing it's good at, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, unless you're like really good with the weapon and you have like respawn punisher, and you were very known for not consistently dying which is very unlikely, then maybe, but still, that's a big if. Because no one has really performed that way ever, and we have yet to see anything like it, so that's that for now. And then we're moving on to the E tier, the uh, eerie tier list, or the, the what, what's a what's a mean word with the, that starts with the letter E? I don't know. <laughs> but um, new Squiffer and fresh Squiffer, I think that's what it is at least. Um, new Squiffer and Fresh Squiffer, I think that's what they are. I think the new Squiffer is the one with the Auto Bomb and the Baller. And the new Squiffer, I think, is the one with the Sunction Bomb and Inkjet, I think. I'm not for sure. Um, they're both better than the Classic Squiffer, mostly because of their kits. I think the only thing that they just do a better job at is they're just better at killing. But I don't think that, you know, a weapon that's better at killing makes it any better. But I'll give it the fact that, okay, it can kill better. Maybe it could paint better because it's got a, a sub-weapon that can, you know, kind of help itself. Um, the new Squiffer, or what is it, the fresh Squiffer? I think it's the fresh Squiffer with the Suction Bomb and Inkjet. I think it's the better Squiffer of the Squiffers because... A suction bomb inkjet. I feel like it's just a consistent squiffer. Maybe, maybe I'm a bit underrating it too much, but I don't really have this tier list in order, so I'm just going off of where I place them for now. It might be ordered, but like I try to at least give it a decent order, but it may not be ordered. I'm just you know being ridiculous and stuff. But the, it just all it does is just do better at killing, and that's the main problem with it. Uh, crack on roller. Uh, same issue with the Flings of Roller, except the only difference is that it's a more consistent roller, but, um, the fact that, I, okay, Beacons, Baller, like, that's a, that's good, especially, uh, Baller, since Baller is, like, the new meta, is still a really good special nowadays, but a roller that can't really move without a sub hurts it a lot. Like, um, if it had a Curling Bomb or, like, Fizzy Bomb, if the Crack on Roller, for whatever reason, had Fizzy Bomb, it would be better, I think, but it's like really dependent because I'm honestly like not completely sure about that. All I know is that the biggest reason why it can't do good is that it can't really um, go anywhere, and plus it also um, can't really paint. Like yeah, it's a roller, it could paint, but shooters paint way better, just hands down. 
Chargers can sometimes paint way better depending on how you're using it, and Chargers also consistently get better kills sometimes. And all that types of shenanigans. So, I don't really have a reason to put the crack on roller any higher. Not a bad roller, but it's it's just super incon- It's just- It doesn't have a way to move. That's the biggest hurt. Uh, Bamboozler MK2, or Mark 2. Um, I'm probably underrating this way too much, but I think the main reason is that it has Toxic Mist. And a weapon with Toxic Mist naturally isn't good. Even the splash o -matic, which, um, is higher on the tier list. The only reason why it's a, a mediocre weapon is because it has Toxic Mist. Like, if it had something else like Splat Bomb, it would be a better weapon. It, actually, if it had Splat Bomb, it would be a much better weapon than the 10 Attack Splatter Shot, because it paints way more. But anyways, we're getting off topic. The Bamboozler doesn't even paint at all. Does it? It's kind of like the same thing with the Squiffer, except, you know, does a way better job at killing, but doesn't even paint, like, at all. Like, not even the slightest bit. Ten Burst Bomb Launcher, I'm not really for sure how I feel about that special, because uh, Soda Slosher, that's really good, and it has uh, it has Splat Bomb and Burst Bomb Launcher, like it uses the Burst Bomb Launcher efficiently, but the Bamboozler doesn't really, most probably because it can't really get specials that fast, so you really have to like, put, you probably just, you have to put a lot of your time into getting that special, like, you know, putting on special charge. Or you could use the Soda Slosher and just put on some special charge and put on, like, efficient, um, other things. But also the fact that you need to save space for your gear abilities for main power-ups so you could do consistent damage with the Bamboozer, which I guess is the strong suit about it. It has a really, really quick one-shot potential. But, um, pa no painting power and, uh, sub isn't really amazing at all by any means. It's not bad, it's just... Not even close to being amazing. And uh, with the special weapon that I don't really think helps the weapon that much further. That's why I rated that low. Now I have both the arrow sprays. Kind of at the same spot. I think the PG version is much better and I'll get into details why. Um, well, uh, later. But both the arrow sprays, what, well the arrow spray just paints. The golden one I have rated lower. I think the silver one's better because it has a bomb or it's more bomb reliant because of its short range and its low killing power. Even though it has a really fast fire rate, even though it can, you know, turf really well, but the problem is, is that Splatter Jr. exists, and uh, all three of them have a bomb, and the golden one doesn't. It has Sprinkler, which helps it paint even more, which it doesn't need that at all. And it has Baller, which is a good special, but that's the only thing good running for it. It doesn't have range, doesn't have any killing power, and it can't really stand on its own. I mean, yeah, I can collect ground it could probably help other teammates as well but the best thing it could do is paint but again it doesn't matter because this, there's a splatter shot junior and they're all more consistent and you can argue that they paint better too uh air spray mg the uh, silver one at least uh again it's bomb reliant it's uh, the, the good thing about it is it has a bunch of bombs curling bomb launcher i'm not sure how i feel about that i feel like it's like the least of the bomb launchers but it can do some things but not really a lot that's mostly my main issue it could probably like get people in sticky situations but then again you could do the same thing with social bomb launchers which are on better weapons especially better main weapons so i don't really see any argument on how to make it you know any better and all that types of stuff um yeah so that's why i have them down here Next up, uh, Custom Range Blaster. I feel like is, uh, it's, it, it's just slow. It is just slow. Everything about it is slow. You know, first of all, it's a really hungry weapon. Like, the, the weapon depletes your ink tank like nobody's business at all. Which I think might be the most ink hungry weapon in the game. Discluding the E-Leader, but, um, that's besides the point. Curling Bomb is really good on certain weapons that want to get around places. But I think the main problem is, is that one... The Range Blaster can kind of do that on its own, so it doesn't, in a way, kind of doesn't need Curling Bomb. And two, the Curling Bomb already takes enough ink, and I think when you do, like, just one Curling Bomb with a full ink tank without any main saver, you will have to do, you can, I think you can only do, like, maybe two shots at the very most. Maybe three, I might be wrong, but even then, that's not really a lot, especially with some other weapons that could do, a, you know, a lot more shots. Um, especially Clash Blaster Neo. One curling bomb launcher, and I think it could do like 
like what 10 shots maybe or 10 blasts for all i know and uh bubble blower um doesn't work with the clash with not the clash buster but the custom range blaster at all because first of all doesn't pop anything really well at all so or i would not really it's just it doesn't pop the bubbles fast enough you really need object shredder with uh for your bubbles because if you don't then you you won't pop the bubbles like in fact i think the enemy team will pop the bu your bubbles or will not, not pop your bubbles but will like deplete your bubbles faster than you can pop yours because you're a range blaster and you don't do much damage to the bubbles or you don't have the quick time to pop your bubbles and curling bomb doesn't help as well because sometimes your bubbles might be like in the air and your curling bomb only like pops if it's like on the ground so that doesn't help it any further as well so it just doesn't have a good kit that's just its problem it just doesn't have a good kit which thankfully for the range blaster i think it does in my opinion at least but uh, we will get to that later in a different video uh, speaking of clash buster neo i have that next um curling bomb that definitely does work for the clash buster neo but that still doesn't change the fact that the weapon is still pretty inconsistent uh tenta missiles do work for the clash blaster neo but it, th I think the main reason why it's down here is because you have Sp Spushomatic Neo and Zap89 and uh, other cool weapons with Tenda Missiles that are actually consistently better. So that's my main reason for putting it down here. Spushomatic, um, no, it, it, it does really good at painting, much better, I think, in a way, kind of better than the Aerospace. It has good mobility, really good mobility. It can get around places with the Curling Bomb, but um, I feel like it just doesn't do a lot by itself or it, it, it can't do a lot by itself because it has no range it does have a lot of power it is a three shot 36 damage which is weird because the tent the splatter shot only does 35 so splush matic has way more killing power than the splatter shot but the main problem is that um it can't do anything because it has no range first of all splashdown uh in a meta where everyone can just aim for if you can aim inkjet really well you the you should be able to aim for splashdown and if you and plus most a lot of splashdowns are kind of predictable you would want to use it the only time you would want to use it consistently is for uh if you were super jumping to someone which is very situational so it's not so already that's not really that great and i don't know it's just a lot of things about it that just doesn't like add up well to each other at all and all that types of stuff um, Luna Blaster Neo, that will be next. Um, I feel like it's the same problem with the Crack on Splat Roller. It can't get around anywhere, it can't paint. Well, I mean, it can paint a okay. Okay, there's a difference between it painting a okay versus it painting amazing. And the Luna Blaster, all blasters in general, paint a okay. So the, it's when I say it paints a okay, that's nothing to run with. Like, don't go telling me, like, oh yeah, new Luna Blaster Neo. It paints so it paints a okay, so that's why it's a good weapon. No, it, it's not because there are other weapons that do better. Like I said, this tier list is this tier list is run off of also what other weapons can do against other weapons, or how well can a weapon do consistently versus another. And Luna Blaster Neo doesn't paint ink mines. It's pretty cool, but it works on stationary weapons like E-Leader and maybe some other weapons that could benefit off. Of, um, or maybe it also could benefit off of weapons that are already a good main weapon like the Tenta Cam Umbrella. But with a low range weapon, it can't do anything by itself at all. Sunction Bomb Launcher, that is a really good uh, special. But you, but I feel like it needs it more than just to be as a special. Like, sub weapon, Suction Bomb, that would be good. I think at least. Special weapon, Suction Bomb Launcher. It's okay, but you really need to have it versus it coming around occasionally. Otherwise, you just got outranged by a lot of things, first of all. And then second of all, you have other weapons that will paint more consistently than you. And then third of all, depending on meta-wise, if, you know, let's just say someone's running a, like, three mains and four subs of splash, uh, main power-up for Splashdown Pro, it'll kill you quicker, too. They will kill you quicker, too. So, there's kind of no reason to use this weapon uh another blaster uh rapid blaster deco i, I actually kind of sad because i used to like that weapon because of the cool idea of it having splash wall which means you could defend yourself and um 
you know, be able to actually kill someone. But the problem is, the way the meta is nowadays, where shooters are way more favored than blasters, and the fact that people can actually aim now, you don't get really a lot. You do do cool things when you do splash damage, and you also, but they're also the same reward as if you were to get a direct. So it's like if you get a direct, like if you get that cool, awesome direct shot with the Rapid Blaster Pro, they they're gonna die almost, but it all but it won't kill them. Versus where if you have another blaster like the Luna Blaster Neo, hilariously enough, where if you do get a direct, it'll actually kill them quicker. And also, it's a really awkward weapon. Like you have to space it really well. Like it's like Marth. It's literally like Marth in Smash Bros. Ultimate. It the Rapid Blaster is the the splash shot or the splash damage is literally the tipper of Marth's sword and that's not good in smash Bros. ultimate and that's not good in splatoon 2 at all ink armor it's all right but with a weapon that can't really paint as much as the splash shot jr then it's like there's no reason to really pick it over the splash shot jr other than if you for some reason prefer long range blasters over them really extremely amazing painting power um easy to use weapons <laughs> I also have the um, e the e leader 4K custom e leader 4K. Um, I have the uh, regular and the scope next to each other because they're kind of the same thing. They're they're kind of the same thing except which one do you want to prefer? Do you want to prefer the ability to occasionally do some mobility work in the ink or be sneaky with it a bit, or do you want to have that just that max range in the game? Which it doesn't matter what you want to pick. I think it's bad. Beacon. There's nothing really bad with having. There's nothing really bad with having. A stationary weapon to have beacon but there is a problem with it having a uh, bubble blower just like the custom range blaster you really you actually really need to um have object shredder but the only problem with it is that the only way to pop it with object shredder is you have to have a full charge shot of the e-leader and the worst part is it's not like it, the only way you can pop it faster is you, you you have your teammates but the problem is you're a stationary weapon so more than likely you're going to be in a position where your teammates aren't going to be and if it's it, let's just and if it's just you the only way you could pop it is your full charge shot with object shredder because you don't have a bomb uh with the e-leader you have beacon that's again beacon can be pretty good on some weapons like the tenabrella but the e-leader doesn't work because it has bubble blower so it just doesn't work out with it a lot tenabrella has the same kit but I'll get into. But once we get into that weapon, I'll go. We'll obviously go over why it can pop bubbles much better. Uh, foil flingza, um, inconsistent weapon. Just a better flingza. It's just better, but it's still inconsistent. It has suction bomb. Has ten missiles. Those are really good. But the main weapon just isn't great. That's the problem with it. If it was a better main weapon, like let's just say it was like just a regular splat roll, and it had suction bomb and ten missiles. Hypothetically, it could be pretty good. Maybe better than average, but that doesn't change the fact that it's not amazing at the very most, so that's why it's in the E tier. Uh, Sorella Undercover Brella. I honestly I honestly think I could be underrating this a little too much. I think it could be pretty good because it has, you know, Splat Bomb and Baller. Though that's a pretty good get. But the Undercover Brella stand still can't do anything by itself. And, you know, the, the reason why the Kensa one... Well, the Kensa one's better because Torpedo doesn't consume as much ink as a splat bomb and torpedo pressures your opponent splat bomb splat bomb, splat bomb is meant to uh, tell your opponent hey get out of my way or you will instantly die torpedo is a pressure and undercover brella needs a pressure uh, sub and special and it doesn't have and the undercover sorella brella doesn't have that so yeah that that's the biggest issue with it glugadoolies super inconsistent i think it's like a 96 gal but like extremely handicapped like the fact that it was supposed to have only one dually dodge roll if it had that easily the worst weapon in, probably one of the worst weapons in the game if it had only one dually dodge roll but um ink mines ink jet not that great it's okay just not great but it being like okay doesn't really do the just of it because there's a difference between it being okay and it being great. Ink mines, um, you, I mean, you know, with the new ink mine uh, stuff you could do with it, it could be pretty okay. Which is why the, it, which is why the Glugadoolies are in the E tier rather than the um, well, the F tier because Glugadoolies can try something, but it just can't 
do what you want it to do. It, it can't paint, first of all. And second off, the, uh, the dually mode, not the turret mode, but the dually mode, has slightly less range than an average long-range shooter like the Splattershot Pro, the Rapid Blaster Pro, the Tenderbrella, uh, any other long-range weapon that has, like, you know, some decent range like the Splattershot Pro, but it it just doesn't have that. Killing power? It, it has killing power. It can do things in turret mode, but you have to. You, you have to spend your half of your gameplay just duly dodge rolling everywhere, and that's not fun, and that's and you can't really just keep that in mind for the an, an entire, like, five minutes of playing ranked or turf war or whatever you're trying to do. Turf war actually just makes the situation worse because you can't paint, like, at all. Ink mines aren't meant for painting. They're just meant for doing silly things and point censoring your opponents that could be stepping into them. It's supposed to be traps. They're not supposed to paint. It's supposed to be a trap. And all that types of stuff. Inkjet? Um, now that people are able to aim at inkjet... It's uh, not that great. Like, if if people could aim at Inkjet, Glucodulis would be a bit higher, but so would the 10 attack splatter shot, the custom blaster, the splash of Matic, and other weapons with Inkjet. So, Glucodulis are just. They're just bad. And then, another Dooley I have after that it will be the Dapple Dooleys. Um, Dapple Dooleys, I just don't see them doing anything. Just a regular one, at least. The blue one is not that much higher, but it is in a different tier, so I think that is higher. Um. Having beacon, you know, that's okay, but it's a frontliner weapon with no range. Like, it's, it has the same problem. It's literally this blue showmatic, but if it can duly dodge roll. That's literally what the dapple dooleys are. And the problem is, is that, you know, with no range, you get outranged by everything. And, you know, without a bomb, you can't do anything by yourself. And suction bomb launcher? That could be alright. Like, it, it can get suction bomb launcher faster than the Neo, the Luna Blaster Neo, but... It doesn't change the fact that um, it can't do anything by itself. It can paint, yes. It has power, yes. It has mobility, yes. But it has no range, and nowadays in the meta that's really important. And it has no... Um, it, it just just because just it has no range, it can't do anything by itself. At all. And then we move on to the D tier. Which is... Uh, the deranged, the dread tier list, I don't know. <laughs> and like I said, um, Dapple Dooley's Nouveau, um, I only put it a bit higher. It still has the same problems, but it, it doesn't have a bomb, but it has Toxic Mist, and I think that's better than having Beacon on a low range weapon because you could probably spam it to do something to trap your opponents and then just run away from them, maybe. Inkstorm, obviously a really amazing special. Well, then again, Ink Storm on any weapon already makes it a good weapon, but no range and no bomb just doesn't allow it to do anything. Um, Aerospray, uh, next I have Aerospray PG, and again, I think it's, uh, I think it's much better because, first of all, it can, um, it has a bomb, and it has Booyah Bomb, and that alone is way better than just doing nothing than paint. Like, Suction Bomb, it, it's a bomb, but it can't really, like, um, it can't kill. Well, it can kill, but you have to, like, be tricky about it. You have to, like, be smart about it. Burst Bomb, you can do, like, the Burst Bomb to, I guess, trap your opponents, run away, and then just evade from them. Just get them stuck for just a few seconds. Just get them stuck for a few milliseconds. You can get the heck out of there with, you know, your Burst Bomb. Or, um, with, um, Burst Bomb, or if you're really up close, you could kill them more efficiently than with both of the Aerosprays, which is why I have it higher than, you know, both of the Aerosprays. Booyah Bomb. Obviously, really amazing special. Might be... It's a... It's a... I don't want to be that guy, but I feel like it might be like a top 3 special. Maybe. Maybe. Even though it's received a lot of nerves where it's easier to break, but... If you're smart with it, and you just go into an area where no one's gonna, like, harass you, then it's not that bad. Although, the more I think about it, maybe that's why it's this slow. Or, that's why I placed it this slow, because you have to play Frontline. And, um... When you get Booyah Bomb... You can spam it, but you need. But I guess in a way, you really need that special power for that booyah bomb, so that you can charge it up faster. But with most wep with all the other weapons, you don't need special power up because you're more than likely going to play smart with it, and you're not going to be literally at the very front of your team trying to um, get booyah bomb again going on, whatever, and all that type of stuff. It it has to play frontline with a special that shouldn't need to be in front. 
and all that type of stuff. And then we have the Hydra Splatling. Auto Bomb Splashdown, I just looked at it and I just knew it wasn't good. You know, um, a really, in a, a ridiculously slow weapon. Like, first of all, the charge time for it to get fully charged is super slow, so that already makes it very bad. Like, in unnecessarily slow. Like, yeah, it does have, it can shoot for a long time. Yeah, it can, um, it has a lot of killing power. It, I think it, it's the same, uh, killing speed as the spush matic in fact. Except for the fact that it does 45 damage now, I believe. 40, 45 or something like that. It's a 3-shot. It's a consistent 3-shot. But it doesn't paint as well as literally any of the other Splatlings. Um, Autobomb consumes... Consu Autobomb doesn't consume a lot of ink. But, like, you need a better thing. It's an... It's, Autobomb is for weapons that can, you know, allow something to push b a bit better. Like the Sorella Brella. But the Hydra Spotting just wants to stay back the whole time. I feel like the Auto Bomb is just to make them think they should get away, but that's not what it can do. Like, okay, if the Hydra Spotting had something like Vizia Bomb, then it could be better. Could be. Um, Splashdown. It's a, the Hydra Spotting is supposed to be a stationary weapon, so you can't really do anything with it other than just, you know, keep shooting at your opponents and just hope that you'll kill them with it and all that type of stuff. The main weapon is supposed to do the whole job by itself. The main weapon is slow. So it already can't really do anything by itself. Or it can't really just carry your whole team. It, it needs to be somewhat able to carry your whole team one way or the other. But if it can't do that, then, you know, it's not that great. Uh, Jet Squelcher would have been great if it didn't have Toxic Mist. Um, but I feel like it's a bit more inconsistent now because of its linear shot. It's a lot harder to aim with it than the Splash Shot Pro, that's for sure. And where and the fact that it, all, it has a slow kill time has a lot of range, I guess. But... It just, it's not the Splower Shot Pro, that's the problem. The Kensa one exists, and all that type of stuff. Well, then again, this is the regular one, the custom one is much better, but... Toxic Mist, Tenon Missiles, Tenon Missiles could be alright, but it can't spam Tenon Missiles like Splat Dulies or... Kensa Splower Shot, or any of the other weapons that have, that just paint much better than a Jet Sculpture, and all that types of stuff. If the Jet Sculpture could paint better, maybe it could be better, maybe... That really depends, but uh, if it just didn't have Toxic Mist, it would just be better. Ink Brush, regular Ink Brush. I'm possibly rating this too low, possibly, but I feel like it's more of a compare the Ink Brush uh, versus the three other Ink Brushes, which is uh, the Nouveau and Permanent. Um, permanent paints and spams Ink Armor, not as well as the Spire Shot Jr., but can kind of do it uh nouveau spams baller like crazy and has ink mines and you know they could get around places the only thing i feel like ink brush is supposed to do is just run up to your opponent splash down or splat bomb the point of the regular ink brush is just to run up to your opponent and just hope you can kill them and then you'll just see that everyone will just outrange you and more than likely if you're really good at aiming at an ink brush then the ink brush can't do anything it just can't like, yeah, sure, Splat Bomb can do something, but I feel like the only job the Ink Brush can do is just try its hardest to kill um, their opponent, but that doesn't really do a lot for it, so that's why it's this slow. Maybe if it maybe if it had something that wasn't Splashdown, then it would be better. Like, maybe if it had uh, Ink Storm, it could be better, because then it could paint and defend itself with Splat Bomb instead of having to search for kills all the time. So, th that's just my opinion, at least. And then I have both of the Octobrushes near each other. Um, the huge problem with the Octobrushes is it, they get outranged by a lot of things. It has more range than a lot of people think. It has more range than the Inkbrush. It doesn't have the killing power, though. And it's slower, so when it, you're doing that handling mode, it's much easier to aim at it. So, more than likely, you're going to die if you even bother doing the handling mode. Unless you're just doing it just to get around places and you're being sneaky with it and no one's around you, then it's fine, but if you're doing it just to avoid someone, more than likely you're going to die because ink brushes can strafe really well, and that's hard to aim at if they're just right there in front of you. Octobrushes, not so much, especially since it's a visually a bigger weapon, so it kind of makes you a bit of a bigger target in a way, but just visually a bigger target, not hitbox-wise or hurtbox-wise a bigger target, just it's easier to see them and all that types of stuff. Uh, Beacon and Autobomb 
I feel like don't really help the weapon that much, especially Beacon. Which is why I think the regular Octobrush is better than the Nouveau. Even though Titan Missiles are amazing, but you can also say Inkjet is also amazing. Even though it's not- even though you can aim at it, but if you just know how to play Inkjet, then it's amazing. It's like Ice Climbers. Inkjet is literally Ice Climbers. If you know how to play as- the, if you know how to play as the Ice Climbers, they're amazing. If you know how to play as- if you know how to play with the Inkjet, it's amazing. But Auto Bomb and Beacon doesn't help itself to defend itself from longer ranged weapons. So that's its big issue. Um, obviously there's not really much it could be done for other than just, just play the Kensa one and even though the Kensa one's not that amazing, but it is better. The next one I have Carbon Roller, just regular Carbon Roller. I feel like it's the same problem as the, um, I feel like it's the same problem as the regular Octobrush. Auto Bomb doesn't help its short range, so all it does is just like make people want to run away and then you just can't chase them down because you're short range. And you know, since because you have a bomb and not a curling bomb or not a fizzy bomb, you can't go anywhere. I mean, yeah, it's a faster rolling weapon, but that doesn't change the fact that it doesn't paint better. It just, in a way, it just kills better. That's its that's its main thing. It just kills better. But, you know, not being able to do that is, of course, pretty, you know, tiresome and just inconsistent. Inkstorm, I feel like, is the only reason why it's okay. Because Ink Inkstorm, you can't really go wrong with Inkstorm. Any weapon with Inkstorm just makes it better. But if it had something else that wasn't Inkstorm, it probably would be worse, to be honest. So, that's why it's um, down here. And speaking of another weapon with Inkstorm, uh, Rapid Blaster Pro, just a regular one. Uh, Toxic Mist Inkstorm. I find it funny that this weapon used to have been a top tier weapon, according to Soren. It doesn't, it lacks its painting power. And it has Toxic Mist, and you know, in a nowadays meta where people rely on shooters because they can actually aim, then um, the Rapid Blaster Pro is just inconsistent. And I already talked about it with the Deco one, but you know. If it didn't have Toxic Mist, maybe it would be better, but um, I mean, Inkstorm helps it paint, so that's a good thing, but it still doesn't change the fact that it just doesn't really do anything anymore, and all that types of stuff. And kind of the same thing goes with the Rapid Blaster. Um, I feel like it's better. It's better than Rapid Blaster Pro because it shoots faster and has a bit of a shorter range. But that's a good- but apparently, the shorter range- or if you get that good even range with your uh, blaster and it has a decent fire rate, then it's good. And that's what the Rapid Blaster kinda has. I mean, like, ish? Like, it has a fast fire rate. It, ba it has the same power. A damage output as the Rapid Blaster Pro. It's just faster, and it just has less range. But it also has a little bit more mobility, I think, because it's a, it's you know, it's like the Splatter Shot, and then the Splatter Shot Pro is like the Splatter, and then the Rapid Blaster Pro is like the Splatter Shot Pro. But um, Rapid Blaster has Ink Mine, and Splat Bomb Launcher. Splat Bomb Launcher is really good. Ink Mine's not really anymore. At least it, it is for some weapons like the E Leader, but Rapid Blaster just doesn't do a lot with the ink mines. Ink mines is just for traps. You need to do the rest of the work with the rapid blaster set, which that alone isn't enough to get the job done, like painting or killing people. You need some sort of way to pressure them or to do something. Or unless if your main weapon's that good, like the Ten Umbrella, that, the, like the Tenta Cam Umbrella, it's, it has a good enough killing power to where it can have ink mine. Then, you know, that's fine, but it's not a Ten Umbrella, and it's not a weapon that can kill people super efficiently, so that's why it's this low. Uh, blaster, regular blaster, um, the main weapon itself is really good, it doesn't, it's painting power is better, in a way, M mostly better than, I feel like, uh, some other blasters, but, the biggest issue that this blaster has is that it has toxic mist and splat, and splashdown, and just from naming off those specials, you can tell it's not that good, at all, so, and especially with the fact that you have to play on the ground a lot with the blaster, you can't just jump in the air all willy-nilly with the Splatter Shot or the Kansas Splatter Shot Pro or Splatter Shot Pro in general, and just, you know, start shooting people, more than likely you'll get your hits. Um, you just have to, um, I don't know, you just, it, I just feel like it's a weapon, a good, I feel like it's a good main weapon with a bad sub and special. I feel like that's just what it is. I think that's literally just all it is. Luna Blaster Neo, um... I feel like it could be underrating, I feel like it could be a C tier, but low range, no painting power, but it has Splat Bomb and Baller, and that's pretty good, but I feel like, but you know, Kenza, Luna Blaster, I feel like, okay, I think the reason why, 
the uh, Luna Blaster Neo would be this low is because the the Kensa Luna Blaster exists. That's Fizzy Bomb, which can actually allow it to get around places, which is important. And plus, it's a, in a way, you can argue it's a better curling bomb in a way. And it also has Ink Storm, which is you know a good special. I don't know if it's better than Baller, but uh, Luna, but Splat Bomb, I don't really necessarily think it completely helps the Luna Blaster a lot since it has no range. I feel like it's the same. I feel like literally it's the same problem with the Ink Brush. It just has no range and Splat Bomb. All it does is just help it to kill people. But you don't. You just want to stand by yourself. You want to be able to stand your ground rather than just do nothing but hope you can kill people when you need your teammates to help you paint. Uh, Cherry H3. I feel like it has the same problem as the Custom E Leader 4K. You need Object Shredder to pop them bubbles and you don't have a bomb. Splash Wall though? I think that's pretty cool. I think it's really cool to have a uh, a splash wall with um, H3 because it, it, it can help you aim. And I can't really okay. I honestly can't say a lot for it. It can paint. It has range. It has power. But you have to be really, really, really efficient with it in terms of aim. You have to just be a master at aiming, and that is pretty hard to do. And especially if you have other weapons that can oppress you better. And all that types of stuff, so that's why it's not good. I think what it could do better is like um if it's special if it didn't had if it didn't need to take a lot of special points to get bubble blower, like maybe if it took like 170 points to get bubble blower, then I think it could be better. But for now I think it's just gonna be a D tier. And I think what another and I think the uh, other variant, the regular H3 is also here because Spotshot Pro is a better point sensor weapon. I mean, yeah, it doesn't paint as well as the H3, but in terms of killing people, it's better. Um, in terms of, and it has Ink Storm, but H3 has Tena Missiles, and you know, I mean, H3 paints, but Tena Missiles, I just don't, I just don't see it doing really anything for the H3. That's kind of a slow weapon, so it kind of hurts it a lot in a way. I mean, it has good ink efficiency, I think, but it's just not amazing. Dynamo Roller. Ink Mine, Stingray, that just makes it want to be a backliner weapon, but it's not a backliner weapon. At least I don't think it's a backliner weapon, even though it's really slow, but it's a roller, and rollers are meant to be slayers. But this one's just a slower and a bit more of a successful roller, because it, it can paint, it has power, un sometimes unreasonable power. If you put on that main power-up, it could actually do some crazy stuff. Like, you could probably kill someone from afar on, like, uh, regular rollers, where you have to be up close to them. But Ink Mine and Stingray doesn't really do a lot for it. It just forces it to stay back, and you can't. And you don't really want to do that. You want to be more of just in the middle of your team. You want to be in the middle of the area with the Dynamo Roller. So um, that's why I kind of just placed it down here because I feel like it's just not amazing in those areas. It just doesn't meet the criteria it just wants to meet. I have both of the end zaps, uh, end zap 89 and 83. I think that's what it is here because um, I think the ends up 89 is the worst and ends up 83 is better than the ends up 89 but um and my reason is um, auto bomb 10 missile spamming that's pretty good but the problem is is that ends up 89 exists and what does it have that sprinkler which helps it paint better but the biggest thing is that ink storm it, it paints really well sprinkler helps it paint really really well and Ink Storm, you know, it only needing 180 points just to get Ink Storm, already makes it really, really, really amazing at painting. Better than the NZF83 at least, where the NZF83 is more of a, it, it's more that it wants to fight, but it can't because it's it does have uh, Ink Armor, like uh, the regular one, the 85 one, and it's not as aggressive. You can get like okay, if 89 had Splat Bomb, then it would be better, I think. Even though 89 in Splatoon 1... Okay, 83 in Splatoon 1 had point sensor, I think. No, 85 in Splatoon 1 had Splat Bomb. That's what it was. So if the end 89 had Splat Bomb, I think it would be a better weapon. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Maybe even a much better weapon, for all I know. Because it does do a lot of painting and all that types of stuff. And, um... Yeah, it, just, it can do a lot by itself if you really tried hard. Uh, next, I have Custom Splatoon Jr., I feel like I'm underrating it, and here's why. Um, spam, it paints better than the end zaps. 
it spams Inkstorm better than the NZF83. But it, it, the thing is, is that Splat Bomb and Kensa Splatter, well, Splat Bomb and Torpedo, one thing they have in common is that they are they are oppressive um, bombs. Maybe just including the Splat Bombs is supposed to be like a you know get off of me thing, but Torpedo can be pretty useful with the um, the regular with the Splatter Shot Junior. But auto bomb with a low range weapon, like again, like I said, auto bomb on a low range weapon doesn't do a lot for the for already low range weapon that can't really defend itself that well. But you know, if it just had uh, something else, then it could be good. But you know, spamming Ink Storm, I think that's what makes it pretty good. Like I think it's very strong on Splat Zones. Any other mode, no, no way. Don't even use it on Clamless. Don't even use it on Rainmaker. Don't even use it on uh, Tower Control. Only use it on Splat Zones. And even then, it's it's pretty great on Splat Zones. That's its strong suit, but um, not really that well on any other modes. That's also what I want to run this tier list off of by, is that how well can it do in all the other ranks. Uh, Custom Splash Show Jr. does really well on Turf 4 and Splat Zones. Pretty well, but not amazing. It, well, maybe, maybe amazing. Maybe amazing on Splat Zones. But... Not in all the other modes. It can't do anything in all the other modes. And all that type of stuff. A squeezer? Possibly under- I'm possibly underrating it a little too much. Maybe it could be a C tier weapon. Because foil squeezer? Well, actually no. I think it does deserve a spot. Because splash wall? Okay. Squeezer itself, I feel like, is not a killing weapon. Unless you have main power up on. And, uh, unless you're the foil squeezer with, you know, splat bomb and bubble blower. But, squeezer- is not a backline weapon and it has stingray and it has splash wall so it's like it wants to play defensive but you shouldn't play defensive with it i think that's the main problem with it it wants to play defensive you just and you know you shouldn't be playing defensive with it but it just wants to i think that's literally the main issue with it i mean it can do its uh, thing you know it does have a lot of range it does paint better than the splatter shot pro and it can get a three shot potential it also has a really good accuracy when you do that tap mode but it really depends if you want to break your fingers and stuff, which if you're comfortable with breaking your fingers, like if you have a lot of experience with ink brush, it's not that bad. I, I believe at least. Depends on how much of a squeezer main you are. If you're a squeezer main, you then you, obviously this isn't even a problem at all. Uh, but Blobber might be underrating it again. I possibly am underrating it, but um, it's after the nerfs, I feel like it just doesn't do what it should be doing, which is laying back and just destroying everything. Rainmaker, I it could be a strong weapon in Rainmaker, possibly. But in all the other modes, not really. Like uh, Tower Control, absolutely don't even use the weapon. Because you have to be... Because what, what you need in Tower Control is the ability to aim for your opponents with ease that are on the tower. That Which is why Blasters are really good on the tower. Or, or really good in Tower Control because it could just aim all over the tower. Blah Blah is kind of hard to aim with when you're looking up. That's the problem. That, Okay, it has no range when you look up, any way up. Like, if you look, like, 10 degrees off of the ground, it has no range. It can't aim for inkjet, it can't aim for anything high, it can't aim for the tower, If it, depending on what map it is, because I think there are some maps where the tower is actually, like, really big. Like, if it's, like, Sheldon Dwarf Institute, which I think is a, I think is a big tower, or I think was, but if it's, okay, let's just pretend like it is. If it's on Sheldon Dwarf Institute, Ball Blobber can't do anything unless it's like on top of the stages, on top of the plats, but Tower Control, it's just not consistent at all. But, um, I think the regular one might be better. Might? I am not for sure. I'm, I just have them at the same spot because I don't know which one's more consistent than the other. I mean, Deco one, having, I think, Sprinkler and, what, what, what was it? Auto Bomb Launcher? It was either Spot Bomb Launcher, I think it, oh no, I think it was Suction Bomb Launcher, I think that's what it was. Suction Bomb Launcher, that's pretty good, helps it paint, it's kind of, a, a Sprinkler and Suction Bomb Launcher, it can help paint a lot, but I, it, I think the problem is just the main weapon. The main weapon just is pretty awkward, like painting wise it's not that bad, but you still have better options, like uh, the Saucer Deco, and um, it's not consistent on tower control. That's just its main problem. Uh, regular one, Splash Wall. I'm not for sure for its use, but it has Ink Storm. So, um, 
It can do- Okay, so actually, I think the Deco one's actually better. I think the Deco one's better, because it has Sprinkler. That can allow him to do something. Splash Wall, I don't think, does anything for Blob Blobber, so... Yeah, I think that's just the main issue. Nautilus 79? I think it's Nautilus 79. Suction Bomb, Inkjet. It's a better new squ It's a better fresh squiffer. It's pretty weird. It doesn't allow it to get to places. The Nautilus, what it needs is it needs to get to places, but it, it doesn't have that. You need your teammates to help you get to places, but that could be a struggle sometimes. Like, if your team was getting really oppressed, then that's a problem for the Nautilus 79. I mean, yeah, it has Suction Bomb, and it has Inkjet, but it has Inkjet. And the 49 has... Oh wait, is it 79 or is it 72? I can't remember. But the second variant, the one with Suction Bomb Inkjet, it has Inkjet. And it doesn't have Baller. Or it doesn't have Ink Storm. It could have a better option, but it has Inkjet instead. That's why it's not amazing. I mean, it's better than having, of course, Splashdown. And maybe better than Ten of Missiles. Maybe that really depends on how you play with Inkjet. But... Suction Bomb doesn't help it a lot, especially since the Nautilus. Splatlings are usually kind of an ink hungry weapon, so Splat Bomb or Suction Bomb I don't think really gives it the gist that it really wants. Um, Slosher, regular Slosher, Tenet Missile Suction Bomb, I feel like it's good because it had because the Tenet Missile buff, like it's the main weapon itself and the self weapon, it's not that bad. The special weapon, Tenet Missile used to have been bad, but I, but you know, now that it's good, now that it's usable, I'm not sure if that makes the Slosher good. But I think it doesn't because Slosher Deco and Kensa Splatter Shot. Those are the two prime reasons why I think uh, Slosher might be is this low. It, for all I know, I could be wrong, and it actually could be like C tier. But for now, I'm gonna put it at D tier, the top of D tier at least, the top of D tier, to be at least generous with the weapon. Immediately, Sprinkler helps it paint better, and Slosher. Um, I don't think it needs Suction Bomb. I think that's just the main issue. It doesn't need Suction Bomb because it Suction Bomb kind of does nothing for it. If it had Splat Bomb, like the Soda Slosher, it could, yeah, but it has Suction Bomb, which so makes it play even slower, so that's the main issue with it, I feel like. And then for the last weapon on the D tier list, and for this video, is the .52 Gal. Regular one is not that bad. I actually was contemplating on whether if I put it in C tier, but the more but the more and more I thought about it, I was like, you know, there is the Deco, and there is the um the kensa version and those are i feel like better ones in their own right um so i'm gonna just put it down here it has baller so that's pretty good but it has point sensor point sensor is not bad it's just very specific on weapons like spire shot pro uh heavy spot lane remix and other weapons and other weapons that can benefit off of a um, point sensor like a uh, custom explosion too it's a frontliner weapon I don't think it needs point sensor. I think that's just my. I think that's just the issue with it. Does it need point sensor? It really doesn't. It could have something else, like you know, the Deco version and the Kensa version have you know, curling bomb launcher or curling bomb, stingray, and the Kensa has um, splash wall and booyah bomb. But I'll get over to you know that in another video. So that's why I just have it here at the top of the D tier list. It could be good. Could be C tier. Could be, but. You know, with its RNG and with its inaccuracy, the main weapon itself, I mean, it could paint, but it has killing power. It, it's a faster fire rate than uh, the 96, but the accuracy with it is just not great. Well, I would say it's not great, because if you put on that main power-up, it could be okay. But on the ground and in the air, especially without main power-up, it's bad. It's just bad accuracy. You just need to get lucky with it. It's not like Splatoon 1 where it was like, you could benefit off of, uh, you know, being able to have a weapon that was just incredibly strong and all that types of stuff. And, um, yeah. And that, ladies and gents, is the F, E, and D tier list of the Splatoon 2 weapons. I'll get into the C, B, and A tier list in the next video. Maybe I'll only go over, like, a bit of, uh, only a small amount at the same time, because, like, holy cow, I've been doing... This recording is, like, 56 minutes, so... Man, I didn't think I was going to get super descriptive about weapons of uh, Splatoon 2 and stuff, so... If you guys enjoyed watching this video, give it a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. I hope I did a better job at making this tier list video than I have with literally everyone else that's made a Splatoon 2 tier list video, especially since no one's really doing it nowadays. So I wanted to do one of my own, and I hope I'm right. I could be wrong, but you know, that this is why it's my opinion. So, with all that being said, I um, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and I'll see you guys whatever we do next. Take care, God bless you guys. And I'll work on the, um, you know, the next tiers up above.
See you later.